Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be talking about IDs and HTML, when to use them, when not to use them, how to use them, and what you can do with them. So keep watching. We're going to get into that right now. So in the last video, we talked a little bit about display inline and display block. And those are two sort of default ways that elements are displayed. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about something called an ID. Now, an ID is a way to sort of identify a particular element on your page. Now, IDs are only supposed to be assigned to one element. As in, if we have a paragraph tag here, we can say something like ID is equal to, and then inside of quotes, we can say main hyphen text. Okay, and what this is doing is identifying this paragraph as the main text. Now what we can't do is we can't come over to our footer and use main text as an ID again. Now if we come to our HTML and we refresh, you'll notice nothing's complaining about us using an ID for both of these items. However, that just goes against the very rules of using an ID. Now an ID is supposed to identify one element and it's supposed to be used as a way to uh, really pinpoint one element. And so for an ID, it has to be in quotes here. It has to be at least one character long. It may not contain any spaces, so we can't say main space text like that. We want it to be hyphenated or underscored or whatever particular style you're working with. I typically use hyphens to separate words myself. And even though it is uh, case insensitive, as in you could have a capital T here uh, instead of a lowercase t, it's fairly common to see IDs just in completely lowercase. So now what are some things you can do with IDs? Well, you can style off of an ID. So we could come to our CSS, which was our styles.css. And you'll remember we just, and just a second ago, we had our, our main text. I'm just pasting this in here like so. And how you can reference an element using its ID in CSS is by simply saying pound, then the ID name, and then we have our brackets and we can say color equals, let's just give this an ugly blue color. So we can say blue and let's come back here and refresh. You can see anything with that ID is getting the color blue. But like I said, we only want one item to have an ID. Also, even though we can style based off of an ID, doesn't necessarily mean we should. For reasons that may not be obvious right now and don't, don't really matter, uh, we'll be using something else to do most of our styling off of. Now, you may see some people use IDs, but there has been definitive studies that show that browser performance is worse when styling off an ID as opposed to a class. So we'll go over what classes are in the next video. But for right now, just simply know that you can do this, although it's not necessarily the best idea all the time. OK, so in addition to styling, we can also link to IDs. So for instance, let's just throw in a ton of sort of blank text here. So I'm going to have a paragraph tag and I'm going to paste this in here and I'm going to grab what's called lorem ipsum. So we can type in lorem ipsum. And if you're familiar with design at all, uh, it's frequently used gen to generate lorem ipsum text, which is sort of like fake text that looks real. Um, it's frequently used at lorem ipsum text to sort of add in fake text that that sort of looks accurate. Okay, so I'm just, this is just temporary here. So now when we refresh, you can see we have all this text. So the reason I did this is because I wanted to prove to you that we can link to a particular ID. You see that we have to scroll all the way bottom to down here to get to the footer. However, let's assign our footer an ID and we can just sign this as ID equals footer like so. Now let's come up to the top here and just beneath our H2, um, let's go ahead and add in an anchor tag, which is an A. So this is a, a linking tag. Now we haven't gone over anchor tags really. This is how you can possibly link to another page. But in addition to linking to another page, you can also link to an ID on the same page. So we can say href, that stands for hypertext reference or 
It's typically just pronounced href. And from here, if we're not giving this a specific page, we can give this an ID. And we do so just by the same way we use this for our styles by saying pound and then the ID name. Now let's wrap that up. And inside of here, let's say link to footer. Okay, now we close up that anchor tag like so. And let's come back to our page and refresh. Now when we click this link to footer, you can see it's going to jump us down to the footer. Now the reason it's not going further down than this is because this is the bottom of the page. It's as far down as it gets. But typically, if you were to have an ID, let's add uh, an ID to this paragraph text right here, the second paragraph we added. We can have this be ID equals long text. And I'm going to just go ahead and use this ID and our link instead of the footer, like so. Now, if we come here, we can click link to footer, even though it's not the, the footer anymore. We can click this and you can see it jumps us to the very top of this paragraph. So this is how you use direct people to various content on your page. If you ever see some website with a link that just jumps you to another point in the page, this is how they're accomplishing that. So you can use IDs to style off of, you can use them as an anchor link, and you can actually use them in a lot of ways in JavaScript to identify a specific element. However, we haven't really gotten into any JavaScript stuff like that, so that should not even be on your radar yet. However, just know in the future that IDs are always pretty much used to identify a very specific element on your page. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.